for his amendment. I completely support your aspirations for the public to be able to conduct their lives um, without uh, disruption. They want to be able to use transport a health service. But when the minimum services are decided by whoever it is, we're unclear. Will you be uh, penalising those employers who don't provide them on non-strike days as well? <laughs> I, I just wondered because, you know, we're going to have minimum. We don't know what the minimum services are, but you know, if if you say we need 50% of the trains to run, first of all, that's all that's all signal people, by the way, because you have to you have to have them all working. But anyway, I'd like to be able to use the same bill to have a go when I can't get the train or when the ambulance doesn't come or what have you. But it won't be the strikers' fault. It will be the organisations or institutions. Can he extend this bill if you want so that I can? use it to sue people who don't deliver the services I need to live my life. Well, when the noble lady says when these regulations are imposed by whoever feels like it, uh, they will be imposed by this parliament because the minimum service levels and three areas we're consulting on now will be the subject of uh, regulation. But, you know, each sector is different, which is why we've, um, we've laid some consultations. Uh, on the regulations, and we're interested in hearing uh, views. But again, the noble lady is getting uh, ahead of herself. Uh, Lord Fox, uh, let me finish making this point, and I'll take Lord Con's intervention. Lord Fox actually has uh, amendments similar to what the noble lady uh, wishes to uh, to bring about in uh, later groupings. So uh, perhaps if she wants to restrain her enthusiasm, then we will get to these points later. I will take Lord Collins's. Well, just to pick up the point about consultation, because. 